Hello photographers! We're here today to talk a little bit about film photography. In specific, as you can see, we're going to talk about bulk loading of 35mm film. First I'll talk a little bit about why you might want to bulk load film, and then we'll go into a little bit of a demonstration about how one of these bulk loaders actually work. So to begin with, why would you want to bulk load film? There are several reasons people will give for bulk loading, but the primary reason you hear most of the time is that it's cheaper. As you see right here, we've got a 100-foot bulk roll of 35-millimeter film. It's also 30.5 meters for our metric friends. And this will give you approximately 18 36 exposure rolls of film in the finished canisters. So if you do a price comparison at your film retailer that you might buy from, what you'll see is typically buying one of these costs a little bit less than buying 18 individual 36 exposure rolls. Of course, the reason being you're not paying for all these different canisters here. A couple other reasons why you might want to do it. Uh, maybe you're into trying new things, trying different kinds of film. So uh, let's move this aside for a minute and we'll take a look at this here. So this, what we have right here, is 465 feet of Fuji Eterna. This is a black and white uh, movie film stock. Not something you would typically use for photography, um, but it's something fun and different that I like to use here. Uh, additionally, if you're into color film, you can buy the Kodak Color Movie Film. Um, and if you want to do home processing, you can easily roll out your own rolls. Additionally, you can just get different film stocks that people may have had uh, laying around that aren't made anymore. Uh, that Legacy Pro I had, let's bring it back in here. Uh, this was a house brand uh, for freestyle photo. It's actually uh, Fuji Acros that they no longer make. So I've got a little bit of it left, been in the freezer, slowly using it away. And of course, maybe the last and my most important reason for why I like to bulk load film is it gives you flexibility. If you're buying pre-made canisters of film, you've got your choice of 24 exposures or 36 exposures. Using one of these bulk loaders, I can make film basically as short or as long as I want. Um, I've never really gone more than 36, but I imagine you could probably get 40, maybe 41 exposures if you just really wanted a long roll. Uh, but what I primarily do is shorter rolls. Uh, say I've got a new camera and I want to test it out. I don't really want to use a whole bunch of film. Go ahead and load off a six exposure, eight exposure roll. Just something quick so I can test it and see what it's like if it's not working. Uh, well, then I'm just not out that much. Um, additionally, let's move this out of the way again. Uh, my most used roll size is probably an 18 exposure. Uh, reason being, if you look at this negative sheet that holds 35 millimeters, we have six rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, and they hold six frames each. So typically that's one full 36 exposure roll. So if I'm running 18 exposure rolls, I can basically get two rolls on a sheet saves me from having to buy more sheets, and for my style of photography, 18 exposures is just right for an outing. Um, additionally, if you've got a film developing tank and you're developing your film at home, uh, you can basically run two 18 exposure rolls at the same time using the same amount of developer you would for one 36 exposure roll. Uh, so you're really not losing anything there as far as a developer. Typically, I just run individual rolls my developer goes a ways and it's not super expensive in my film chain. So those are kind of the main reasons why you might want to bulk load film. Um, certainly it's cheaper, uh, especially if you're rolling weird sizes like I like to roll. You're able to roll those short rolls if you want to test. Um, and then you can just use some of those weird different films that you might not otherwise get a hold of. So I think that covers that part pretty well. Let's talk a little bit about how you use one of these loaders and um, what the different parts are. So we'll look at this Alden right here um, and just uh, bring it up, take a little bit of a closer look at it. Uh, so basically this right here, this big thing here, this is your film chamber. So this comes out, you'll see there's a little slot in it. That's where the film goes through um, in order to roll into the canisters. Here on this you'll see it's got a core in it. Um, most of the bulk rolls come on a reel, um, but sometimes you get loose film. So one of the nice things about these Aldens is you can just tape it to this core. 
Typically, uh, if I've got loose film, I just use like a toilet paper roll or something. Over here, you'll see we've got our film door. And this is how you get into here where you would load your 35 millimeter cassette to load up the film. We'll cover that piece in just a moment. As you can see right here, there's a little tab that swings up and out of the way. The purpose of this tab is that when it is up, for you to open the canister side here, it is blocking this. As you can see, it says open or close. It's blocking this off so you can't open the bulk film loading door. And then when you want to close this canister side, this closes down. You rotate this to the open position. And that way the film can come out and through here. We take this out again. So what you're doing is rotating this piece right here, this film gate. So when it's closed, it's tight. There's nothing that you can see through it. And then when it's open, and, every, and this top door is closed, the film can come through. If we look over here, you'll see a film counter on here. And basically this is how you tell how many exposures you're using. Uh, this Alden also has a, another feature which basically tells you how many feet or meters you used in a bulk roll. Kind of neat, but it basically only works if you're rolling 36 exposure film. Come around to the other side here, we'll see a crank handle. Basically, this is just what you use to crank the film. So let's set this aside for a moment. And let's talk a little bit about the process of how you would actually load the film. So there's kind of four steps here. And some of them have to be done in the dark. Some of them can be done in the light, uh, depending on how you want to do it, how familiar you are with film loading. So of course, the first thing you need to do is take your bulk film, go into your dark room, and you're gonna have to open up this can. You see it's got a tape seal on it. Take this roll out. And remember, we're doing all of this in the dark here. We open up our film chamber, and you insert your film into the film chamber. So as you see here, I've made kind of a dummy roll and just taped it to a roll of tape so it has something to, to roll on. Again, this part has to be done in the dark. If you put this film out in the light, you've just ruined all that film that you bought. Once this is in, we need to take care that, again, this film gate is wrapped around. And then we go ahead and tighten this knob down doesn't have to be super, super tight, just finger tight so that we can rotate this open and closed. Then what we're going to do is open up the door here. And if you can see down into there, again, we're still in the dark. You want to open up this film gate and you can reach in there with your fingers. Basically, you want to pull a little bit of this film out. On this Watson, you'll see there's a really nice handy dandy little flip up container here, or a little flip up lever. Um, this does the same blocking that I talked about on the Alden. So once we've got this film out, again, remember we are in the dark. We're going to go ahead and close this top, rotate the film gate to the closed position. So now you're bulk loaded, your film's in here, this film gate's closed, you can come out of your dark room, and now you can use this handy dandy little lever to open up the top here. And what you'll see is with this lever open, you can't open the film gate. If you look in here, there's a little tiny sliver of film, but it's pinched off so no light's getting through. This next part here, you can do this in the light if you would like. I like to do it myself in the dark. Um, however, if you're new to loading film, you probably do want to do it in the light. Um, the reason I would say uh, that you might want to do this in the light is that um, it's just easier to tape the roll on um, if you don't have experience. So basically what we have to do is take this little piece of film that's sitting out here, pull it out just a little ways, 
and we're going to go ahead and tape it to our spool. So right here I've already got my tape made out. Um, you can experiment with lots of different tapes. I've found that electrical tape works the best for me, super cheap. So basically we're going to take, put a little bit of tape on it, put our reel right here, wrap around and make sure that the tape comes all the way around so that it is touching the back side of the film here. That way we have a good and tight connection. Also just want to make sure this isn't at any sort of angle or skewed there. Once that's on tight, you can go ahead and insert the reel into your reloadable canister. Um, this is another piece you definitely want to get with a bulk film loader. I myself prefer these metal style that just have pop-on lids. They look just like a regular old film canister other than these lids pop on and off a lot easier. They do make plastic ones. Never cared for them myself. I, I really do recommend the metal ones. So again, we want to pull this just a little bit further out so that we can drop the film here into the cassette holder. So we pull both the lever wind and the knob and the this little knob out. And then you just have to spin them a little bit until they pop all the way in. So now we see our films in here. And I don't know if you can see it real well, but there's actually sprocket holes right here. And we want to make sure that those are engaging sprockets on the film. So now that we have this part done, we can go ahead and close it up again. Remember, if you're just starting, go ahead and do this part in the light. The downside is that last frame, or maybe two frames, depending on how much of this film you pull out, is going to be exposed to light. Um, so you do need to remember to stop to basically two frames short. Um, if you've done it for a while, like I have, basically I just go ahead and do this part in the dark so I'm not losing that extra frame or two. So here we close the safety lever and we close the lid. And then we come around to the side here. And again, this one says gate open or close. So we go ahead and turn this to open that film gate in there so that the film can now come through free. Now you'll see right here, there's a little nub. We can't, we can't open this. So, so it's safe for us. This part right here, totally do this in the light. This thing's completely sealed. No light's going to get into it. Um, so what you want to do on these film loaders is it's going to depend on the model. In a Watson, you go ahead and set it to zero. Let's bring that Alden back here real quick. And if you take a look at it, it actually zeroes out at the 36 exposure notch. And what you'll notice is that's one, two, three, four basically extra exposures before zero and so that gets you your leader. In the instruction manual for the Watson what it's going to tell you is zero it out run your exposures plus four. So basically what we're going to be doing is turning the crank here and as we turn the crank you'll hear it click for every exposure and so you would click off however many exposures you wanted so if you were doing a 12 exposure we'd go up to 12 plus four more for your leader. This one's old, it's hard to read. I basically just count the clicks. So you just click, 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 click away. Once you're done, it's gonna kind of be the opposite of how we loaded everything in here. We take this film gate, rotate it to the open position. I'm sorry, we were in the open position. We're gonna rotate it to the closed position. And then we can open the safety lever. So what you'll see is you have a nice film canister right here. You can go ahead and pop the levers out. What I usually do is just turn the whole thing upside down so that the film easily comes right out. And then basically we're just going to cut it right off. There is your film that you have. So again, if you're doing this part right here in the light, this little bit of film that's sticking out is going to be exposed. Generally, I try to cut it back as far as I can here. What that means is I can generally um, cut it open in the light without having to fiddle around with scissors and things in the dark. 
um, but that last little bit is basically going to be under the tape, so I'm not going to have to worry about exposing over it. So that's how we load our film. If you had another roll of film, you would again tape it on and close everything up, open the film gate, turn this, click, 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 however many exposures you wanted, and you can just load up as many cans as you want. Once you're all the way done loading all of those cans up, you need to go back into your dark room. And what we're going to do is make sure everything's closed up here. Unscrew the film chamber. We'll bring this film chamber out. And then this is where we take the roll. Of course, in my case, this is just a test. And we'll go ahead and put that back in its appropriate little canister. And then tape this back up. Uh, the tape is just an extra light seal to just make sure that you're not getting any light in on that film. So that's basically it. That's how you bulk load. Um, I really highly recommend doing it. It's a great way to, again, get into some of these weird different films maybe you haven't seen. Um, or just make those custom rolls or, or just make things a little bit cheaper. Um, I'm really a big fan of either this Alden or the Watson model loaders. There are some people that um, claim that they don't like these because they do have a little lip here. You are pinching the film. Um, potentially you could maybe put a little crinkle or a scratch in it. Um, I've loaded with these things, uh, specifically that Watson loader since 1987, 1988. Never had any issues with uh, scratching or pinching or anything like that. One last little thing we want to talk about here is now that we've made our film, uh, you'll notice um, one problem. When you want to put your film into a camera, it usually has a little tongue on it like this. And when you bulk load it, it uh, comes off straight or, in my case, uh, not so straight. And so we basically just have to cut this. There's two ways to do it. You can uh, hold it up to another piece of film like this and just take your scissors and use that as a template to cut. Um, or I found that the cameras aren't too picky about how long this actually is. So I just go ahead and try to round the corners, don't do a very good job, and just kind of freestyle it. So you'll see it's not perfect, but it's enough to fit into a camera and load up just properly. So. That's kind of the main stuff I have. Um, I think everyone should try bulk loading. If you really like shooting film, it's a great way to um, tailor it to yourself. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, just uh, go ahead and leave those below. Thank you.